You know, you know that I will work every day to protect your health care, to protect your education, your job, and your future. And you also know Danielle Smith. And you know that she will tell you what she thinks you want to hear. And then she will go ahead and she will do whatever she wants. Privatize your health care, gamble with your pensions, pander to extremists. Fact is, it is just time for a better government, one that is focused on what matters to you. I know that a lot of Albertans, but they want a stability right now. They want to know that their jobs are secure. They want to know that there will be opportunity for their children and their grandchildren. They want to know that they are safe walking on the streets in their neighborhoods and taking public transit. They want to know that, uh, that they are going to be taken care of, and I share that with you. It's the main reason that I put my name forward as leader and as premier. My most important goal was to ensure that we had stability and that we had security. And I want everyone here today and every Alberta to know that a united Conservative government would provide that stability. Welcome to a special episode of the Cross Border Interviews. My name is Christopher Brown, and I'll be your host for this exciting episode. Today, we are dedicating this episode to the May 29th Alberta provincial election. Now, with just 29 days left until the big day, tensions are now running high as citizens across this province gear up to make their voices heard. But it's not just the individual who is invested in this election. Municipalities across Alberta are also paying close attention to what the candidates are saying. From rural towns to bustling cities, local governments are hoping to hear concrete plans and promises from those seeking to lead this province. Today, we'll be speaking with representatives from the Alberta Municipality Association and the Rural Municipalities of Alberta to get their perspectives on what they're hoping to hear from the candidates and party leaders. We'll be discussing a range of issues from healthcare, economic development, infrastructure, and so much more. So, with so much at stake in this election, it is important for both voters and politicians to stay informed and be engaged. So, let's get started. Up first is our interview with Reeve Paul McLaughlin, President of the Rural Municipalities of Alberta. Election 2023 is now underway. We have 29 days until people start, or technically people can start casting the votes in a few weeks, but 29 days until election day. What is RMA hoping to hear from the party candidates and the party leaders? Well, truth be told, I'm probably the only person that's really excited about it because because the only certainty in life is change. So, uh, But this is an opportunity to, to reestablish the relationship. No matter what, there's going to be a change, whether it's ministerial or otherwise. Uh, and so this is an opportunity to, to refresh the relationship, uh, to, to really pick up our key advocacy points and to have our discussion. I mean, we, we want people to understand the rural lens. Um, we want to make sure that MLA candidates are having those discussions. And, uh, you know, as was said in the days past, all politics are local. And so it's really an opportunity to support the relationship between municipal leaders and provincial leaders. And this is an opportunity to refresh that relationship. Is there a concern from RMA and from your standpoint that this election is going to ignore the issues that are facing rural Alberta? Because uh, there's been much talk about Calgary being the epicenter of this election. But we have to remember, as people in the media, as uh, elected officials, that there are people in rural Alberta as well. Is there concern that the issues that you want the party leaders to address may not be addressed because the seat count isn't in your areas? Well, you know, it'd be ridiculous for me to think that uh, I, I wasn't looking at poll, um, you know, look at look at population data and 85 uh, percent of the population is considered urban and 15 percent is rural in the last census. And that wasn't that rural Alberta didn't grow, uh, just that the urban centers are growing a lot faster. And so I think that this discussion is always a big discussion because we represent 85 percent of the land base. Uh, we're stewards of the land. Everything you hear about energy, uh, agriculture, renewables, uh, the path forward is occurs in rural Alberta. And we represent 26% of the GDP, but only 15% of the population. So 
per capita, we're punching above our weight. We're almost contrib contributing a factor of two to the, the GDP. And so although our numbers are small, our, our impact is heavy. So undeniably, um, you're hearing a, an arena in downtown Calgary. Um, you're hearing a lot of urban-ish uh, urban type discussions, but we did hear roll a lot in the big policy pieces too as well. Um, you know, our biggest conversation is really uh, around a billion dollar haircut we received. Um, and, and, and we were told fiscal prudence is key and we need to, you know, do more with less. Uh, and then you can to come to campaign season and, and holy cow, the, 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 the coffers are flush and the money is flowing. So uh, we need to get back to long-term planning and long-term fiscal understanding and realize that, you know, the good folks that I represent rural Alberta, um, we have infrastructure that's critical to the economy of Alberta and we need to support that infrastructure. So I want to ask your standpoint as president of RMA, what is the issue or issues that you're hoping to see addressed by the parties in this campaign? Is there is it infrastructure? Is it funding? Is it being a partner? What is the major issue that you're hoping, God forbid, if they talk about something, they talk about your issue and it's X. What is that X issue for you and RMA? You know, the, I think that X is, is tied to that relationship piece with fits municipal funding, which fixed property tax, uh, unpaid taxes, healthcare, is really that that relationship, that partnership. Um, we've been putting up red flags on healthcare prior to it becoming a, a provincial issue. We've been putting red flags as it relates to to taxation and unpaid taxes before it became came action. It's really reestablishing that relationship and that autonomy. Understanding, and, and you've been talking to municipal politicians all across, and you understand the passion and the, and the power there. Uh, and the energy and the knowledge. And, you know, I make a, I make a, I made a speech just a little while ago. And I think that the, the biggest relationship to have is that we're here as a partner uh, before you do something stupid and you should check in with us and, and float those trial balloons, sit down with, because I represent a, a contr contributed amount of knowledge to, to what makes Alberta better. And, and we are close to the people, as you well know, that, that, um, I, I hear it at the feed store. I hear it from my neighbor. I was just talking to my mechanic and, and he told me how the, the world should work. And that's important. That's a valuable voice to use. And so our hope is to, to have these discussions. I can talk about internet. I can talk about healthcare. I can talk, talk about crime. Um, but it's that autonomy and that relationship, re respecting uh, municipal government, I think is an important piece going forward. There's been a lot of talk about downloading over the last few months that I've been talking to municipal leaders from across Alberta and across Canada, but particularly across Alberta. Um, are you hoping to hear from the party leaders or even local candidates? Because we have to remember there are local people who are putting their names on the ballots this election as well to hear about how they're going to work with municipalities. So municipalities don't get the blunt of this downloading cost, whether it be from oil and tax revenues, whether it be unpaid property taxes, whether it be from the AER, whether it be RCMP or police uh, services. What are you hoping to hear from uh, provincial leaders or even local candidates about that partnership when it comes to downloading of services? <laughs> Well, I, I think we need to get back to that citizen voice and that servant leadership conversation where local municipal leaders working with local MLAs can advocate for their community in the best interest of their community. Uh, we've centralized our politics and we've centralized our decision making, and we've learned that that doesn't work. Uh, the big Goliath of Alberta Health is just too big to manage the local issues. That's the fundamental reality. Bigger is not better. And I think that we can work with MLAs and we can empower one another regardless, and we're not partisan. You know, your typical municipal official success is in, in nonpartisanship. I'm not divided by partisanship ideology. Um, we're about building communities. And I think that recognizing that, I think, is an important part of any candidate. And MLAs have to get back to not the party stuff, but get back to being um, accountable to the folks that elected them and, and being involved with those community advocacy pieces. And I think that's a big thing. And, and you know, I think I've mentioned to this to you before, but I think the downloading is a symptom of the disconnect. We're treated as, as a lower form of government other than another form of government. And that's a big distinction. We're not a lower form of government. I probably have more political experience than a majority of the MLAs running right now, if not those that are actually in office. And I would say that I've got even, and I actually look upon political leaders within within my organization that have greater experience than me. Um, I'm on my seventh premier. Uh, I'm probably in the last two years, I'm on my fifth 
<laughs> Minister of Municipal Affairs. Um, if you want to look for certainty and stability, look to mun- rural municipal leaders. We, uh, we've been around for a little while. So you have been uh, uh, Reeve and on council for some time now, and this is an election where the unknown is uncertain because we don't know where it's going to go. It is probably one of the closest elections we've probably seen in some time now. But traditionally, and I'm not bursting any bubbles here, Paul, but rural Alberta traditionally votes for one color. They have once gone a different color or in two elections ago, they've gone different shades of the same color, I will say. What are you hoping to hear from the other party? And I'm going to call it, call it out, the NDP, to say, okay, if you want to be taken serious in rural Alberta, start talking about X, Y, and Z because you're not connecting. You are leaving an an unabashed amount of the voting population to just one party because you won't come here. Yeah, and I think I think there's an opportunity to learn. And, and to be open to that rural lens. And I, I think that's a great opportunity for the NDP. If I was to provide them advice, is to, to spend some time uh, with your rural friends. Um, understand agriculture, understand the, the situation of the family farm, understand um, the supply chain, understand transportation as it relates with that rural lens, understand energy in our perspective. I mean, we're having a fascinating discussion now around uh, renewables on uh, high, high grade agricultural land where we're actually trading food for power. Um, those are interesting conversations. And I think that the one thing that I would remind anybody is, is to, to remain curious. And uh, one thing I did hear from from not Lee personally, she came out to my farm here and I took her on a tour of the farm, was uh, she recognized that, that Bill, Bill 6, going back to the Farm Safety Act, um, the spirit and intent might have been, been uh, genuinely an important piece, but it missed the mark. And I think that the NDP and from her personally, she said they learned a lot from that to work with work with partnership and work for collaboration and and work with those folks to identify the best way to approach it. Um, I think that's a lesson that the NDP had learned. Um, I would hope they continue to learn that. And I hope they continue to actually share um, that knowledge that, um, you know, I don't think we should vote for color. We should vote for who can do the best job boots on the ground. And I think that if you have some good candidates from the NDP that are open to the putting that rural lens on. I think that's an important opportunity for the NDP. And on the flip side of that question, the Conservatives may take rural Alberta for granted because traditionally they have voted blue in the past, so they don't need to spend resources or spend time door knocking in your communities. What are you hoping to hear from the Conservatives or even Premier Smith when it comes to those local issues that we've already talked about, whether it be healthcare, infrastructure, uh, farming, agriculture? What are you hoping to hear from the Conservatives? Because, again, people matter and you are representing some population of this province as well. For sure. And, and if you look at the last budget, I think that if you played uh, rural bingo, uh, the last <laughs> budget actually made a nod towards rural more than I've ever seen in any budget uh, in the terms I've been in office. So um, and I think there, there were conversations around rural issues that have come out of this government that I think are positive. So, um, or, you know, can we be taken for granted again? Undeniably. Um, it's hard to do so when, when you continue to have that relationship and you work with municipal leaders. And, and I think that the, that's more of an opportunity, I think. And this is why I guess I'm excited about the election is to refresh that, refresh the lens, make sure that we're not taken for granted. And it's a two-way street. I think that we need to be solution focused. And I think rural municipal leaders need to continue to be solution focused. That's one of our strengths. Um, we're the ty- type of folks that get things done. If something's sitting on the ground, they're the ones to pick it up. They're the ones to move it. If your tire's flat, they're the ones to help you change your tire um that's what rural alberta people are are about and i think that if we can maintain that relationship and you know what i I, you bet i I live in a conservative community uh with conservative values um but i also am hearing that they want they want to make sure that they're they're being supported and represented in government as best possible and i think that really comes down to those local candidates those local mlas and that's the most important thing i think that needs to happen in this election what should municipal reeves mayors councillors be asking their local candidates from a municipal standpoint because every community is going to have their different issues every county every md is going to have their different issues but at the end of the day you need to work as one as rma so what are you hoping that the local elected leaders are asking their local candidates in this next 29 day period well, you know, I think municipal government, we have only access to 10% of, of uh, taxes. And so 
what we do uh, on behalf of all Albertans, all, all on the same elected folks that elect those MLAs, uh, we provide tremendous levels of service and infrastructure. Um, and rep- recogni- recognizing the strength of municipal funding, um, the need for certainty, uh, I think is important too as well. And understanding the role that we have in infrastructure. Um, and, but r- infrastructure also means GDP. It also means opportunity. It also means innovation. And I think that recognizing um, that need at the local level. So, so the hard hitting question is, is how will you best represent um, those conversations around infrastructure, rural infrastructure roads, uh, understanding that piece and, and how, how much are you willing to learn? Um, you need to be an advocate for agriculture, but at the same time, innovation too as well. Um, we're not just agriculture, we're energy and other pieces. We're also seeing a high level of commercialization and industrialization. Great opportunities are coming to rural Alberta. And so we need to be visionary. We need to ensure that we're working together to find solutions for the future too as well. So I think, you know, from a local perspective, we need to ask those MLAs that first of all, first and foremost, are you going to become a representative of our community? What is your relationship you're going to establish with municipal council? And how can we work together on key advocacy pieces? Um, having having MLAs uh, not working on healthcare issues locally, but having municipal officials that downloading conversation you had earlier, there's a disconnect between those roles. And I think that we can do that together. Um, and I think that if we look at that at the local level, I should be advocating with my local MLA on EMS, uh, I should be, you know, consulting with my local MLA as it relates to healthcare, doctors recruitment, and so I think if we can make those connections locally, I think that will make rural a better, better place. And ultimately, anytime rural Alberta is doing well, the rest of Alberta does well. I want to talk about healthcare because you brought it up, and I want to, I want to touch that third rail for a second, if you don't mind. Um, all we municipalities always have solutions. They always try to come up with solutions before approaching uh, the province. You have resolutions at RMA. And when it comes to EMS and healthcare, we are seeing a major change in the last few years since COVID-19. What are you advocating for? And what are you the solutions you're bringing to the table? And you're hoping that the party leaders or local candidates will say, okay, we will work with you on this policy, this resolution to make sure these issues of shortage of EMS, shortage of healthcare, healthcare closures are addressed after the election. Well, and I think that, you know, this took a long time to break uh, and it's going to take a lot longer to fix. And and we're not alone. Uh, this is this is actually a, a worldwide problem. Um, healthcare, the bigger file piece is is, is covering the entire planet. Um, we always recognize. But you're seeing it firsthand, is, though. You're seeing it firsthand. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it boots on the ground. I see it daily. In fact, if I if I hurt myself right now, Chris, um, I mean, I get the neighbor to drive me to town because my wife's not here. So, because the ambulance isn't going to make it out here. We've centralized healthcare, and our experience is that the bigger is not better. Um, you lose connection, uh, you lose accountability, and and you start using metrics that don't make sense on the ground. And you can sit there and tell me 90% of the time we're successful. That's That sounds like an A, right? Except this is healthcare. <laughs> 90% isn't a, isn't a metric, a KPI to work for because the 10% is a failure that could be people's lives. And I think that we've consolidated and we've, we've actually put it, we, we've made it too big. We need to break the beast down into smaller units that actually can be more accountable and can deal with those local parameters. Uh, when my ambulance is getting sucked into the city of Red Deer and never leaving, when my ambulance is no longer here because it's doing a transfer uh, for another community, we have some big conversations that we need to have. And I think if we continue to go back to localizing and managing the, our KPIs from that local perspective, that's the solution. And we can do that, but what it requires is, is a pretty, pretty big breakdown of how we do things now. And I think it's going to require a lot of support and a lot of partnership. But um, attracting doctors, attracting nurses, attracting healthcare people to local Alberta, uh, ties to immigration, you need to use your community to attract healthcare workers and, and, and those service providers to our communities. Um, you can't attract them on your own. And you require everybody in the community to actually work for that, that recruitment conversation. And because you're attracting typically a, a, a service professional and their spouse, um, happy spouse, happy life, happy partner, happy life. So um, it does require that complexity and that teamwork. And I think that uh, in order for us to fix this, um, I, I don't think you can do it alone. Um, I think you can do it by, first of all, letting everybody understand that this thing is very complex and very broken and we need to work together. Um, I need to have an ambulance 24 seven in Rimby, uh, which is closest to me right now. And that every community, I need to have a node. I know that I'm half hour from an ambulance at any time 
But at right now, I could be two hours from an ambulance to three hours from an ambulance. The system's broken and we need to fix that. The other piece too is that uh, we are connected to the frontline workers and those are the number one in the conversation. We need to support them. Um, the average like, the average career expectancy of an ambulance driver used to be nine years and now it's down to four. Why is that? Um, overworked, overtired, um, underpaid maybe, and a combination of all three. And, and that tells me a lot. If your career is going from nine years to four years, um, there's something something that needs to be fixed in that system. We are 29 days away from the next election and people are going to be deciding at the ballot box what's the major issues that are important to them. Talk to the people of Alberta right now who might be listening or talk to the the candidates because we surprisingly have a lot of MLAs and former MLAs listen to our show for some reason. But what do you want them to know? What is the big takeaway that you are hoping that over the next 29 days RMA is able to hammer into the ground and hammer into their brains to say, this is us and this is what we need from you. Well, I, and I think that uh, I can I can list my wish list of rural internet and increased infrastructure funding and, and healthcare and social services. But the best way to approach this conversation is to get back to to good government on government on behalf of Albertans and to have that conversation that I don't care what political stripe you are. Let's work together to to solve these problems. Multi-party systems, working with different MLAs and 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 subject matter experts, working on on the collective to find solutions. I think that's we really need to change how we've been doing government outside of ideology. I think there's a real opportunity there to to work in a collaborative space. Um, I the best solutions I've found aren't tied to ideology, but are actually tied to dialogue and conversation. And let's get back to, down to dialogue again. So my message as the leader of rural municipalities of Alberta is to let's talk again. Let's have that dialogue and solve, solve problems together. I can give you a laundry list of the stuff that we need, but with our rural lens, that's how we do stuff. That's the old hall raising was let's, we need to build a hall, let's all build the hall. And you know, while we're building the hall, we're not talking about ideology. We do what's best for the community and we build a hall together. And I think we need to get back to that um, at the provincial level. Let's all build a hall together. So let's all build the Calgary Arena together. Let's recognize that there's infrastructure needs throughout province of Alberta. So I never discredit anything that's going on in the city of Calgary, recognizing that is the municipal partnership. But at the same time, don't forget about the rest of us either. What are you hoping to hear on your other hat as Reeve of Pinoca County? You know, a lot of projects have been put on hold. Um, they need to be prioritized, prioritized from a local level. Um, our hope too is to, is to have some some stability and some understanding from a funding perspective, uh, to have a good vision, um, not for next year or the next election, but actually have a good vision for the next five years. Uh, the best form of government is stable government. Uh, the best form of government is predictable government. Um, if, if things are in the paper, I don't want to be in the paper. Uh, the people that I represent as the Reeve of Pinocchio County, if I'm not in the paper, I'm doing my job really well. Um, ah. I'm making sure that things are getting getting done well. And and the good folks that I represent, they want you to stay out of their, stay out of their way, stay out of their life, and, and make sure that there's no barriers for them doing the good work that they do on behalf of all Albertans. So um, as the Reeve of Pinocchio County, I want a stable government that doesn't spend a lot of time in the newspaper, but spends a lot of time solving problems. Thank you, Reeve McLaughlin, for the chat. Now we will be sitting down with Alberta Municipality's Vice President of Cities Under 500,000, Mayor Tyler Gandum. Election has been called. Uh, 29 days from now, uh, Albertans are going to be heading to the polls. As the organization that represents the majority of municipalities across Alberta, what is Alberta Municipalities hoping to hear from the party leaders and their local candidates? Sure. I think first and foremost is just being a partner with the provincial government. Whichever party forms government, it uh, doesn't matter to us. What we're really hoping for is that uh, we've got a voice at their table. We're able to have those communications with them. And dis decisions aren't being made without our input or without us at least being aware of it. And then we've got obviously, a, sorry, we've got our election priorities for sure too, with community building, community health and community safety. So I want to talk about the first thing you talked about there is about a partnership. What does the true partnership between Alberta municipalities and the provincial government look like? You talked about being someone at the table, but there has to be more than just being at the table. Having a voice is something as well. Yeah, so we represent 275 municipalities across the province, uh, over 85% of the population. 
and we know what our communities need and we know the best way to have our communities function efficiently. Uh, I think that if we have the opportunity to share our expertise with the provincial government, uh, everybody wins. Is there concern that the majority of the time this election is going to be spent in Calgary and some of your member municipalities may not get their voices heard because uh, the distribution of seats, it just lands that way that Calgary is going to be the main focus. And even Edmonton, where some of the smaller communities that Alberta municipality represents may not be able to get their voices heard on the provincial scale that they desperately want or need. Yeah, I think having the opportunity to work with uh, all of the municipalities that we represent across the province, we're all looking for the same thing. I mean, obviously, a big arena deal in Calgary isn't something that uh, Wetasim is looking for, but Legal is is looking at the same thing. They need some money for an arena as well. So I think we're all looking for the same thing and looking for a little bit of equity in terms of how that um, funding is allocated across the province. Uh, my hope is that funding doesn't go to a municipality to influence an election. I hope that it's the provincial government's realization that uh, they've got a role to play in what infrastructure looks like in each of our communities. And this is just the start of, of where we work through that. You talked about the three priorities that you're going to be uh, hopefully educating members, but also all of Albertans over the course of this next 29 days. Can you speak a, a little bit about the advocacy work that you're hoping that your members and you as Alberta municipalities do over the next 29 days to make sure those three priorities are addressed locally and also provincially? Sure. I, th I mean, breaking them down into each individual one, the community building, there is a hundred billion dollar infrastructure deficit across the province. Uh, each municipality is tackling it as best that they can. Uh, for the city of Wetaskiwin, we've got a hundred million dollar deficit in infrastructure. And so while we get cut in places of grants in place of taxes or a fine revenue increases, um, or we're paying for things now that the provincial government used to pay for, that has to come from somewhere. Either we cut levels of service, our infrastructure, infrastructure deficit continues to not be addressed or we raise taxes. And so I'm hoping that uh, the provincial government recognizes that and sees the value in what a strong, well-built, foundational community looks like and how it's to everybody's advantage that that's what we work through. Uh, it's, I mean, an, an arena deal is sexy. Everybody loves to hear and talk about that, but we've got the foundation on our houses, you know, also need to be looked after. So it's no different than our underground infrastructure in a community. Those items need to be looked after as well as, as a big ticket item like an arena in a big city. Uh, the community health, we've been struggling now. I mean, it's no secret. The pandemic just shone us a spotlight on the deficiencies we are seeing within our healthcare system. Uh, we've had emergency rooms closing. We've had a diversion of patients. And we've had emergency rooms running at capacity where they're advertising that you're going to have a longer than average wait because they just don't have the staff to manage that. And then you look at EMS calls. Uh, we've got delays in ambulances. We've got smaller municipal fire departments that are cutting up or covering the slack of, of a, a gap in service that our EMS is able to provide. And it's not, in no way am I saying that any of these services aren't doing what they can with what they have, because I know that our EMS workers are doing what they can with what they have. I know that our nurses and doctors and healthcare uh, employees are doing absolutely everything they can with what they have. But there's got to be something that changes in how we're delivering that service. And that's a big ticket item, I think, for our communities, because if a, a hospital or an emergency room closes down in one community, it just puts a strain on the next one. And it just seems to be a domino effect on, on the issues that we're facing province-wide. There is a and, lot of, sorry, I just want to jump in on that one for a second, because in my conversations with yourself on the cross-border interviews and many other mayors and councillors across this province, um, health and EMS is one of the big things that has been more recently talked about, um, particularly in these sort of outside of the larger 500,000 population zones in the more rural urban centers. Um how, what do you want to hear? What is the key takeaway that you want to hear from the party leaders to say, this is how we're going to address EMS shortages, 
making sure, is it just a blank check or a check to say, here you go, here's the money that you need to fix the solution? Or what is the solution? Because to come and say, we have three priorities, you must have solutions to those priorities that you're open for. For sure. And I think that, I mean, a blank check isn't going to fix the problem. You can't just throw money at something and make it, make the problem go away. Uh, I, we've heard plans in terms of what they're doing with EMS. We've heard plans on what they're doing with uh, healthcare in the province. And I guess just the implementation or seeing the turn in what those services look like because changes have been made on how they're administering it, whether they're changing how a, a doctor, a nurse from another part of the country or another part of the world is able to come here and maybe cut some of the, I don't want to call it red tape, but I mean, there's checks and balances in place to make sure that our nurses and doctors that are coming here are trained to our standard, which I think is extremely important. But I think we need to come to a point now where we're attractive to those other doctors from across or around the world and nurses and doctors from around the world wanting to come to Alberta to make sure that we're well looked after. And so we've seen plans, we've heard plans, um, and statistically, maybe it looks better in the big cities, but we're still struggling in a smaller community. Uh, my city is just about 13,000 people. And so the population that I represent for cities under 500,000, so the Red Deers, Lethbridge, Medicine Hat, Grand Prairie, Fort Mac, Leduc, Airdrie, St. Albert, they're all dealing with the same thing. Everybody's competing for the same nurse or the same doctor. Everybody's competing for the same paramedic to come and work in their community. Uh, we need to be attractive across the board to make sure that our people are looked after. If we live in Alberta that has um, all of the advantages that we have, my concern shouldn't be that there may or may not be an ambulance to respond to a call. There may or may not be room in the emergency room in my local hospital for them to go to. Uh, that that honestly should not even cross my mind, but it absolutely does. The last key area that you want to hopefully talk about during this election with the party leaders and the local candidates is community safety. Um, there's been a lot, and I think you probably got a bill as well from the federal government about the download, downloading of RCMP back pay onto municipalities. Uh, there's been talk from some provincial parties that we should move to a provincial police force. There's been talk about helping uh, municipalities like Wetaskiwin, Grand Prairie, Fort McMurray, St. Albert, so on and so forth, to move to a municipal police force. Um, when it comes to community safety, what are you hoping to hear? We got to address the root cause root cause of the problem, uh, whether you're municipally enforced, provincially or through the RCMP, it doesn't matter. Changing the uniform, changing the decal on the door doesn't change the level of safety. If we're not looking at the addictions and the mental health that are the, the basis for a lot of the crime that's going on in Alberta, then we're not going to see any changes. We're going to have continue with the revolving door of our prolific offenders, our repeat offenders through the judicial system. We're not going to see any change in what our crime looks like in Alberta or across Canada. It doesn't matter who polices us. They've still got the same mandate. They still have the same limitations, um, regardless of the, the uniform. So again, addressing the root cause of the problem, and Wetaskiwin is a great example of that. We've got a higher than average homeless population, especially for a city of just about 13,000 people. We'd rival any big city in North America per capita with our homeless population. And addressing that and addressing the addictions and the mental health that goes along with that is going to completely change the dynamics of my community. And I truly believe that it'll do the same thing in Edmonton or Calgary or any other smaller community that's dealing with that population. What should mayors and members of council and even residents who are listening to this ask their local candidates or be asking of the provincial leaders when it comes to community building, community safety, community health, and making sure that they understand that municipalities are struggling in some sense, and we should be asking the correct questions. So what, in your opinion, are those correct questions to ensure that these issues aren't pushed aside, but are the key platform that these party leaders and candidates are running on? I, I think each mayor and each member of council in each community knows what their uh, key priorities are, whether it's infrastructure, health, or safety, and making sure that your, represent, your representatives of the candidates that are running to be your MLA know that um, and continue that relationship moving forward. 
just because they've got a great answer leading into an election doesn't mean that once they're elected, they're not still responsible for making sure that those key issues are looked after in each of those municipalities. Uh, go back to them, build that relationship, and make sure that they're they're looked after. And I think that's one of the big advantages of Alberta municipalities. When we represent 275 municipalities across the province and we pass a resolution, one of the factors is that it has to benefit all municipalities. It can't just, I, I can't just go in there and say, well, Taskwin needs this and I now have 85% of the population backing me. It's got to improve the lives or change something for all of those municipalities that we represent. And making sure that when you when we go to uh, conventions or conferences and we do leaders caucuses, that those conversations are had. We have the opportunity to meet with ministers, uh, share the the concerns that we have, and I hope that it's being taken back and those conversations are being had. Uh, not always do we feel heard, and not always do we see the change that. Um, has been promised. And I'm not talking recently, I'm talking in the, the history of government. Everybody's got a great story to tell when they're looking for, for your vote and they're trying to be elected. It's just a matter of holding those people accountable once the election is done and seeing that change happen. And it goes back to us being those the partners with, with the government. Um, not only being at the table, so having that conversation, but we need to be, we need to be used for the expertise and the, the connection we have within our communities. You've been mayor for some time now. I think if I'm not mistaken, two terms. If I, yeah, yes. that's my second term. Second term. So you've been mayor under an NDP government and a UCP government. This is a unique election that Alberta has been thrust upon here. And I want to ask this poignant question, and I apologize if it comes out of left field, but I want to ask this. You've, di- you've been through two elections as mayor now. How do you see yourself making sure that the candidates locally or even the party leaders are held responsible for what they say, because you just said it best. They will promise you the world to get elected, but once they get elected, they go off to Edmonton, they do what they need to do to govern. How do you ensure as mayor or as councillors that the promises that are made to you as mayors, as municipalities are kept, but also uh, followed through on? It's keeping our MLAs, our ministers and our premier accountable for what they've said. There is no shortage of information. I mean, in today's technology and our ability to recall something that was said four years ago, um, verbatim, here you go, this is what you said, this is what you promised. Uh, And then not letting people off the hook with, well, you know, we had this information or, well, you know, that was a good idea. If, um, if, If you're coming in with promises, you better be able to deliver. And that's one of the hardest things when you're going through an election is that, Making promises that you possibly can't keep, uh, I think, is dishonest and takes away from how the general public sees elected officials in general. If you're not being true to what you're saying and you get elected and, I mean, you get a four-year job um, in whatever role that that is, I I hope that the the recall of, of the voters remembers what it was that the individual said they were going to do or had promised. And they're held accountable for that too. It's it's tough. And I, even at a municipal level, it's tough. Um, one of the things that I've never done is made a promise coming into an election. This is what I want to work on. These are my goals. These are my priorities. And hopefully they align with the community that I want to represent. I'm hoping that I see the same thing from these MLAs who will, some of them will eventually become ministers, is that their priorities um, what they align with or what they want to do in terms of that work is what comes out over the next four years through that term. Thank you, Mayor Gandum, for that amazing conversation. Also, thank you for joining us for this special episode of the Cross Border Interviews, where we have been discussing the upcoming provincial election and what municipalities are hoping to hear from the candidates and party leaders. It's been a fascinating conversation to hear from representatives from both the rural municipalities of Alberta and Alberta municipalities and get their perspectives on what they're looking for in their future leaders. From ensuring access to quality health care to promoting economic development and investing in infrastructure, it's clear that there are a lot of important issues at stake in this election. That is why over the course of the next 29 days, 
We, the Cross Border Interviews, will be sitting down with other RMA officials and Alberta municipalities officials to talk to them about what they're hearing, what they're seeing, and how this election is unfolding from a municipal standpoint. As we move closer to Election Day, it is important for all of us to stay informed, to make our voices heard, and hold our elected officials accountable for their promises and actions. We hope that this episode has been informative and thought-provoking for you, our audience, and we encourage everyone to continue to learn about the issues and their local candidates. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and we will be returning on May 8th and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce high quality content. Every little bit helps. And we appreciate your support. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for behind-the-scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally, as much as we love our phones and technology, let's remember, particularly during this election period, to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with your neighbors, with the candidates at the door, and with the volunteers, even if it's just for five minutes. So once again, I want to thank you for watching, and we will see you next time on the Cross-Border Interviews. And remember, everyone, just keep talking.